Uh, my name is Mona Jarahi and I am an Associate Professor of Electrical Engineering at UCLA. Uh, I'm the Director of Terahertz Electronics Lab and in my group we work on uh, various terahertz uh, devices like sources, detectors, modulators, uh, spectrometers uh, and also we are exploring uh, different kinds of applications of terahertz waves for imaging, sensing and spectroscopy. Terahertz is a part of the electromagnetic spectrum that uh, is uh, between uh, microwave and optical frequency ranges. Uh, a lot of molecules have very unique spectral signatures at terahertz frequencies and that allows us to identify different chemicals uh, from uh, remote distances. Uh, also a lot of optically opaque materials are more transparent to terahertz frequencies. Uh, and uh, that allows us to access uh, environments that are visually inaccessible to us. Also, uh, terahertz wave energy uh, is much less than X-rays or even optical waves, uh, and as a result, they're non-ionizing, non-destructive, uh, and as a result, they can be used for different medical imaging applications. Uh, as a result of all these unique specifications, terahertz waves have uh, potential applications for industrial uh, quality control, chemical sensing, uh, biomedical diagnosis, uh, different space applications, uh, and we are very excited about all these potential applications. Uh, the focus in my research has been mostly on uh, developing uh, more efficient uh, terahertz uh, optoelectronic device components. Uh, so in my group, uh, as a major part of uh, my research, we were working on uh, a specific kind of metallic nanostructures that uh, we embed them in semiconductors. And when we shine them with laser light, we can get a much more efficient generation of terahertz waves and detection of terahertz waves. So for example, if you use this kind of source and detector in an imaging or spectroscopy system, you can get more than 1,000 times uh, sensitivity. Uh, and that was a great motivation for us. So that's an area my group has expanded a lot on that. And now we're using these sensors uh, for uh, many kind of imaging and sensing applications. On another direction, uh, we are working on different kinds of reconfigurable metamaterials to basically uh, build uh, passive device components that are missing uh, at terahertz frequencies. Um, working in optics or microwave regime, one can take for granted a lot of different filter options, modulator options, uh, switches that you have available, attenuators, but these are not very trivial at terahertz frequencies. Uh, so we have worked on various types of uh, metamaterials that we can electrically manipulate its spectral and sp spatial properties at terahertz frequencies. Uh, and we have shown uh, very interesting results in um, unprecedented waves for uh, changing the direction of terahertz waves, which is very important for remote sensing, or modulating the intensity of terahertz waves over broad bandwidth, which is very important for imaging and sensing. Terahertz has been before used for um, tomography for detecting cancerous tumors, but because sensors were very large, it was limited to scanners which were operating out of the body. But now we're working on miniaturizing these sources and uh, detectors such that they can fit in endoscopy and bronchoscopy probes. So we are extending the potential application uh, to a different domain to do in vivo imaging inside body. Uh, or in another direction, we are collaborating with uh, JPL from NASA where we're using our technology to build very high sensitivity spectrometers uh, for detecting spectral signatures of gases in different planetary atmospheres. Uh, in another recent work, uh, we are using terahertz waves uh, to basically monitor the dynamics of uh, different biological processes at nanoscale without using any labeling molecule. Whenever a new chemical bond is formed or um, is uh, basically detached uh, in a biological process, you can see the changes of your terahertz spectrum and uh, we are utilizing that kind of potential uh, functionality for monitoring biological processes. There are a lot of great applications for terahertz which have been known for a long time, but the scope of their potential use was really limited because of lack of devices. So we think we are in a very good position 
uh, to uh, go back and uh, re-examine our um, lock uh, with those applications, with better tools that we invented, uh, to hopefully not only get better performances from these devices, uh, but also identify new applications. One of the things that uh, is still missing in the field that has prevented exponential growth uh, on the consumer market has been identifying a killer application, like what cell phone industry did, what computer industry did. Uh, we are really looking for that kind of killer application uh, that can uh, bring a big flow of funding and resources and experts to the field.